what do I do to take care of myself when I'm in my triggering season? That is an excellent question. The first thing for me to do is to realize that it's happening. Sometimes my triggering season can creep up on me and I don't even realize what's going on. When I find myself disassociating, when I find myself not being organized, when I see myself having behavior that's outside of my norm, that's where I start realizing what date is coming up. What is going on internally that's starting to make me feel very triggery. And then I start realizing what an important date is. And I tried second to start removing things from my calendar that I don't have to do. Everything that I've signed up to do when I'm in my triggering season is not something that I can manage. Yes, it is difficult to tell people no to something I may have said yes to already, but the reality is I can't do it any longer. And if I try to do everything, I will collapse. And that looks like saying maybe canceling a dinner date with a friend, canceling extra projects that I was going to sign up to do, and giving myself time to do nothing. That is what self-care looks like for me in my triggering season. And then I may return to picking up some things that I may have said no to, to see if I can handle that weight. But if I find out that it's still too much for me, I say no and I let it go. And sometimes it's difficult to say no because we feel like we always have to qualify or give an explanation. I have learned no is a complete answer by itself. And if someone does want to ask me why, I respond with another no. Because it's not my responsibility to break all that down. If I've said things have changed, I'm unable to do it, then that has to be acceptable. Because I have to choose me and my own mental well-being. Also during my triggering seasons is when I try to make sure I'm exercising a lot. And it's not something super strenuous. I'm talking going for more regular walks. I need more outside time. I need more vitamin D. I need an opportunity to refresh. I can't be in front of the computer and doing all these different things. I need to watch some funny movies. I need to pull away and spend time with family and friends that is not an obligation, but to refresh myself. And also, I have to lean into those sad moments. When the grief is coming for me, I found that I spend more time trying to run from it than just embracing it. Allow me to show you a bit of a clip from the day before Mark's birthday, which was one a very emotional moment and where I leaned into my grief. Like you don't want to allow yourself to cry because you feel like you're going to lose yourself. Oh, thank you for the forever rose. But the best thing we can do sometimes is just to cry, just to let it out, just to not hold it in. Oh, thank you, Dr. Shinner, because trying to hold that in, eventually it has to come out. Eventually the tears, the, the way we feel has to come out because if we keep fighting to try to hold it in, we will expend so much energy, so much energy trying to hold it in. Yes, it will make your blood pressure go up. You won't be able to sleep. You'll start using other coping skills that are not healthy. Our tears are meant to release those pains and it is healing.